Percy and Rosie. It was a splendid day on the island of Sodor. The trees bustled, the trains went around, and the water sparkled as the trains went by it. The day was good, all except poor Percy, who once again had to take a large lot of coal. Taking so much coal is such a horrible job, said Percy. It's so boring, and I always get so dirty from all the coal dust that those stupid trucks keep pulling around me. I just wish someday, instead of getting all the dirty job, I can at least get one nice clean job, grumbled Percy. His driver laughed from inside the cab. Oh, Percy, he said. Haven't you learned anything from the last time? Taking coal was one of the most important jobs. Percy sighed. I know, I know. I just wish for a change, you know? Kind of like when Stephanie had to, like, you know, when Stephanie didn't want to go on his railway or his branch line because he wanted such a long run. His driver looked at him anxiously, or cautiously. What do you mean? What, how does, what does that relate to this? He asked. Well, you see, I just wish for something different, you know, said Percy. A change. Hmm, said his driver. You know what, Percy? When we get to the coal plant, I'll ask the coal plant operator to see if there's any engines who can take our place. Oh, thank you, said Percy, thankfully. Once Percy had reached the coaling plant, his driver and fireman got out to talk with the manager of the coaling plant. As Percy waited in the siding, Rosie appeared. Hello, Percy, said Rosie. Oh, hey, Rosie, said Percy. What are you doing here? Oh, I'm just taking some fuel to the fueling plant, said Rosie. It is very hard work. I wish I can have a change for once. Percy smiled. You know, Rosie, I'm looking for a change, too. Perhaps we can switch jobs? Rosie smiled. Of course, we can do that. So, once the fire and driver came back to Percy, Percy explained to them that he and Rosie wanted to change jobs. Rosie, also Rosie's driver and fireman talked with Percy's fire and driver men, and soon arrangements were set. Percy would take the fuel to the fueling, um, to the fueling plant, and Rosie would shunt trucks in the coaling plant and take them to Brenham Docks. Have fun, Rosie, said Percy as he went away with the fuel trucks. Oh, I will, I will, smiled Rosie as she started shunting coal trucks together. Percy was soon on his way to the field depot, and Rosie was having a lovely time biffing and bashing the coal trucks together as she shunted them into sidings and quickly formed a train for her to take away. The foreman then went to speak to her. Rosie, he said, there are too many of these coal trucks for you. I'm afraid you're going to have to get James to help you. James, said Rosie, I don't think I need help from him. I think I can take these coal trucks on my own. The foreman tried to talk with her. But these coal, but there's too many of these coal trucks. You need another engine to help you. I think I can manage on my own. Besides, it's only coal trucks. What are they going to do? The foreman tried to stop Rosie, but Rosie already went away. Uh, damn it, engine, said the foreman. Uh, I'm going to have to call breakdown train just in case. Meanwhile, Percy was having loads of fun traveling down the line with the fuel. This is so fun, this is so fun, said Percy. What a nice change, what a nice change, he said. But the change was soon to become more of a annoyance as Percy started to go up the hill. Ugh, these fuel trucks are so heavy, he said. Hmm, maybe, no, I don't think that'll work. I have to keep going to the fuel depot. Then suddenly, snap! The chain for the fuel trucks broke, and the fuel trucks ran down. Oh no, yelled Percy. I have to go get them. Meanwhile, Rosie was having trouble of her own with the trucks. The trucks were bumping and pushing her down the line and screeching to a halt whenever they can. We don't want you, they yelled. We want Percy. Percy's the one who always takes us. She'd say, hey, whether you like it or not, and there's nothing you can do about it. The trucks giggled to themselves. Oh, I think there's something we can do about it. They, they giggled to themselves. They soon whispered their plan to, the other tr to each other truck. When we get to the docks, they said, push her off the rails. Push her off the rails. Push her off the rails, they whispered to themselves. Rosie, unaware of this, continued down the line. When they reached the docks, it was somewhat sunny, and it had rained earlier that day, and the trucks were still wet. Paxson the Diesel was getting his load off from Cranky. Hey, Cranky, he said. 
It looks like it's going to rain again, doesn't it? Nah, it doesn't look like it's going to rain from up here, said Cranky. Oh, hey, there's Rosie with the cold trucks. Rosie whistled <coughs> as she passed by. Hmm, she's going quite fast, said Paxson. And she was. The trucks were pushing her down the line. On, 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 faster, faster, yelled the trucks. I can't stop, I can't stop, yelled Rosie as she tried to screech and halt her brakes on. The driver and fireman tried as much as they could to stop her, but they couldn't, and the tracks were all wet. And soon, she fell right into the water. Luckily, no one was hurt, but poor Rosie lay down in the water as her fire and driver men jumped clear before she went in there. You fucking stupid engine, yelled Cranky from above. Now we'll have to get the breakdown train, and you know how much trouble that will be. Plus, that shows it's going to cause confusion and delay. Poor Rosie couldn't say anything, for as she was in the water. Are you okay, Rosie? asked Pax Paxman. <laughs> said Rosie. Oh dear, we better get a crane soon. Har Cranky, call for Harvey. And soon, Cranky told the workmen, and the workmen saw what had happened, and Harvey was soon on his way. Meanwhile, Oliver was having a lovely time going down the line with Toad. He was getting rocks from the quarry to bring down to Bretham Docks. He was just about to pass the points when... <coughs> he then screeched to a halt. What was that, Mr. Oliver? asked Toad. I don't know, Toad, but it looks like... but that sounded like Percy's whistle. And it was. Percy was going down the hill trying to catch the trucks. But the trucks were too fast, and soon Oliver found what was ahead of us. Oh no! Back, Toad! Back! Oliver pumped his pistons, trying to go back, but it was too late. Luckily, no one was hurt, but the poor fuel trucks were battered and broken, as Oliver sat down, dazed and confused. Oh no, he said. He, I realized something. What was that, Mr. Oliver? Percy's coming down the line. He, he, he'll crash right into us. Quick, driver, change the points. The driver quickly jumped out of Oliver's cab and ran to the points and switched them just in time. <coughs> down came Percy, tired, and he went down the line into the other point and smashed right into the buffers. Luckily, Percy wasn't too damaged, but his back buffers were smashed and bashed from the accident. Percy's driver and fireman then walked out of his cab and went over to Oliver's driver and fireman to explain the situation. They then telephoned for Harvey, and luckily Harvey was already on his way home from Rosie's accident when they heard the news. All right, Harvey, said his fireman. We gotta, do an we gotta fix up another accident. Again, said Harvey. Oh, all right. At least we'll have fun this time. Well, maybe. It took a long time, but thankfully, Harvey was able to clear the mess and get Percy back on the track. Oliver wasn't too damaged, only a slightly cracked funnel, so he was still able to make way and get up the hill. Percy, however, wasn't able to move. The crash to the buffers damaged his wheels and pistons, so he had to be moved onto a flatbed and taken to crew for fixing. Percy was shunted into the repair yard until another engine was able to take him with his flatbed, and there he saw Rosie. What happened? he asked. I thought you were taking my coal trucks. I did, said Rosie, but they pushed me into the sea. And what about you? You were supposed to take my fuel trucks. They were too heavy, said Percy. They, they, the couple broke off. Well, I guess we both shouldn't have switched jobs. Yeah, I guess so. We, we, we really should have just stayed with our jobs. I'll take coal trucks any day over those fuel trucks. And I take those fuel trucks over those dirty coal trucks. They're really dirty. Just then, the fat controller came in. Well, well, well. Switching jobs, eh? Well, I don't really blame you. Maybe I should switch jobs normally, but you two sure had a rough day. But cheer up. I heard that crew has got some new parts to fix you two, so thankfully it won't take too long to get fixed. And he got and he went away in his car. Percy and Rosie then talked about their day and how the accidents happened, and soon they were both laughing.